Welcome to our webinar, Secrets to Business Financing Success, by Patrick Katowski of SLK Finance. My name is Ryan Kauf, and I will be your host today. I direct the Wisconsin Small Business Development Center, or SBDC, at UW-Green Bay. The Wisconsin SBDC at UW-Green Bay is part of a statewide network supporting entrepreneurs and business owners through no-cost confidential business advising and targeted educational programs. Regional SBDC experts facilitate improvement and growth for small and emerging mid-sized companies and help launch successful new enterprises. The no-cost business planning, advising, and low-cost leadership development training at the Wisconsin SBDC at UW-Green Bay is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration, or SBA. Our website is uwgb.edu slash sbdc. Today we continue our 2015 monthly no-cost 30-minute topical webinar series designed for the success of small business owners and their executive team members. At the conclusion of this webinar, we will share the upcoming webinar topics, and we encourage you to consider registering for those. We thank Mickey and Tim from First Business Bank and Michael Wentworth of TMR Associates for their partnership in developing and promoting these monthly webinars and for their dedication to small business success. There's Michael Wentworth there. We thank him and his company, TMR Associates, for their partnership in this webinar series. TMR Associates is the B2B appointment setting company providing qualified leads and market insights. After the webinar, you will be emailed a link to a recording of this webinar. And during the webinar, you are invited to ask questions at any time. Please use the menu along the right side of your screen indicated here in the red circle. Type your question and hit enter. As soon as I see it, I will make note of it for the presenter to address toward the end of our webinar. And now I'd like to turn it over to our expert presenter this month, Patrick Katowski of SLK Finance. Patrick? Hi there, and, and thank you, Ryan. Uh, I'm really looking forward to today, uh, and I'm always interested in talking with uh, business owners and people involved with business about alternative finance because I have to tell you that one of the one of the very common things that happens with me specifically when I speak with new clients is that when I start talking with them about the products and the things that we provide and what we're able to help with, inevitably they say that they weren't aware uh, of this type of financing. So what I'm hoping to do today is create some awareness. We'll go through some of the products. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about alternative finance and if it's something that appeals to you Hopefully you'll have enough information. We certainly can't go in real deep today, but hopefully you'll have enough information that you can move forward if it makes sense for your business. I've put together um, some slides here, and I want to run through uh, the agenda that I'll go through today. First, I want to talk about business stages and how financing works in a very general sense in business stages. I call that the finance continuum. Of course, I'm going to talk to you about alternative uh, financing. Uh, and specifically some non-bank solutions that are out there. I'll get into a few that are, are specific. I'll talk about scalable offerings that grow with your business. I'll talk about options for off-balance sheet financing, which, which is definitely attractive to some businesses. We'll talk a little bit about collateral because all lending institutions will look for collateral uh, as part of the lending process. I'll get into how the lending process works in alternative finance because it varies a little bit from what you may be accustomed to in the standard um, banking industry. Uh, and then we'll have some time for summary and questions, of course. And then I want to tell you a little bit about SLK Finance, uh, where I work, where I'm from, and some of the things we provide and, and, and why we're here. Uh, so I'm going to jump into this right away. And I wanted to show you this stage diagram. It's, it's common for me to use this diagram when I first meet with clients. Uh, to give them the understanding of the landscape, essentially, the background for finance for businesses as they go through their evolution and go through their growth. If you look to the left, you'll look at stage one. 
And if you've started a business or you're part of a business, you're probably familiar with that stage. That's the stage where you first start your business. The funding for starting your business, especially these days, comes from your family. It'll come from your friends. You might take out a second mortgage. Those startup funds are typically enough to get your business going. Once you've proved out that business, uh, you'll move to a stage two and then eventually all the way over to stage three on the right side of this slide. I want to move over to stage three and talk about that because eventually most businesses have to graduate to that formal banking relationship that'll be with their business ongoing. So that'll be a long-term relationship. Today though, what we find with banks, and this is coming out of the financial crisis that we had five or six years ago, what we're finding with banks today is that in order for you to get to that stage three and, and create that formalized banking relationship, they will want from you somewhere between two and three years of pretty solid financials. And sometimes that can be very difficult. We all know what it's like to grow a business and to get through that important stage two where you're going through the growth. Uh, and that's really the area that alternative finance lives. And it's in the middle of that slide. It's in stage two when you're beyond proving your business out. So you've tested your model. You've tested your markets. You're, you're providing a product or a service successfully, but you want to get through that growth, but you haven't gotten to that point where you have two or three years of solid financials, let's say, to create that formalized banking relationship. It used to be that in stage two that banks manage this stage fairly well, but with the financial crisis, what we're finding today uh, coming out of that is that they're a little bit more reluctant to operate in stage two, and what it's left is a gap. And Alternative finance attempts to fill that gap. Now, in stage two, you have you have options. You have alternative finance. Uh, you also have the option of private equity. And when you compare those two, the, the major difference is going to be in cost, first of all. Private equity can be a great option sometime, but you usually give up a piece of your company to do that. And if you look at the actual cost of that, it can be fairly high. Uh, with alternative finance, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the offerings, but Typically, you're just paying money back, and you have uh, all of your business uh, for yourself when you're done with alternative finance. So that's the major difference between alternative finance and private equity is the cost. And with alternative finance, uh, you're typically not giving up a piece of your business. So when we talk about alternative finance today, most of it lives in this stage two. Now, I want to talk in general about alternative finance first, and some of the things that you'll notice about alternative finance, particularly when I compare it to that long-term ongoing banking relationship. The first thing that we'll notice about alternative finance is that the offerings are fairly common. I'll run through these on the, on the very next slide, and you'll notice that you recognize some of the offerings. There's a few, though, that are a little bit more flexible uh, and match the growth phase, that phase two, very well, and we'll go into those also. But bank-like offerings, very common in the alternative finance world. The other thing that you'll notice about stage two and alternative finance is it's meant to be a short term a short term offering to help your business. Uh, that's different than when you're with the ongoing long term relationship with your bank where you might have terms in your finance that are four years or six years or ten years. Typically in alternative finance, we're looking to get you through events or we're looking to provide working capital, and those are short-term fixes because, again, it's best for all businesses to graduate to that stage three where you have an ongoing banking relationship, so the terms are shorter. Because alternative finance companies um, operate in branches, uh, most of the businesses are, are smaller or they're decentralized, and what that really gives you is a direct connection with the team that's going to evaluate your specific situation, and there's a lot of benefits to that. Uh, you're very close with the team that's going to be making decisions about your business finance and some of the benefits that come out of this are fast turnaround because you're typically dealing with a smaller group and something that uh, where the decisions are made locally, the turnarounds are usually pretty fast and I think you'd be surprised by how fast the turnarounds are, especially when we compare them to banks. It's not unusual to get uh, turnarounds on finance products inside of a week, which when you compare it to the uh, traditional lending in the banking industry, that's, that's fast. Uh, and then what you naturally get 
because you have the direct interaction with people who are working in finance every single day, is that you benefit from advisory and best practices. Now, it, it's not an advisory business per se, but the advisory really supports the lending process. And it's natural for you to take direction from alternative finance companies because, again, they're in this every single day. And hopefully the things that you pick up in this process you can take with you when you graduate to that banking relationship, some of those fundamentals. I said I wanted to talk about some of the offerings, and we'll go through these one by one. The first one I want to talk about is a simple line of credit. And we all recognize the line of credit. We're familiar with the line of credit. Uh, there's some things that we like about the line of credit. Mostly it's flexibility and freedom. Uh, and the freedom in this product, of course, is the ability to uh, draw on it when we need it and then pay down the balance as we go. And that can be a great way to control or uh, have an effect on the cost because we can pay that balance down and we're, we're charged on the interest on that balance. So we have some cost control when it comes to a line of credit. So flexibility, freedom, and some cost control in that line. The second one is a simple short-term loan. And again, a very common product throughout uh, lending. But the short-term loan, it's a simple product, but I have to tell you that when it's in the form of a short-term note, this can have a great benefit on your cash flow. When you're set up with a short-term note, whether it's three months or six months or a year, or whatever the term is, when you're making interest-only payments on a short-term note, it can have a great benefit to your cash flow. So even though it's a simple product, uh, it fits a need uh, and it can have great benefits to your cash flow when it's in the form of a, of a short-term note. I mentioned that there'd be some other products here that you may not be as familiar with and one of them uh, or two if we throw them together is going to be purchase order financing and contract financing. And it's not likely that you would find this type of offering at a bank, um, but for purchase order financing and contract financing, that's where the alternative finance company would actually use the purchase order or a contract that you've received as collateral for a loan. Um, probably one of the best things and most attractive things about this type of offering is that it's scalable with your business. We'll talk about this one specifically, but this is a very scalable product that actually grows with your business. The next one is receivables factoring, and this is becoming very, very common, especially in the commercial lending industry. You can find many, many companies that are out there uh, working in receivables factoring. I mentioned that we talk about something in the area of off-balance sheet financing, and this is really the offering that presents that. It's off-balance sheet financing, and I'll go into this in a, in a little bit more detail, but essentially what you're doing is you're selling your receivables, uh, and there are some great benefits, not only in the fact that it's off-balance sheet, but that it's also scalable with your business. So this is a typical lineup that you'll see as far as offerings go in alternative finance. Now, specifically in contract financing and purchase order financing, I mentioned that this was scalable. Essentially, what happens is if your business, especially in a growth phase, if you take on a very large order or a group of orders and you're wondering where you're going to get the working capital to produce those orders, things like working capital for things like labor or materials or components, this can be a very viable product for you. Again, we take the purchase order and we'll use that as collateral and you get funds forwarded to you based on the value of that purchase order or a contract. So the funding is based on the value and the funding is used for working capital, working capital to produce or execute what's ever in that contract. Essentially, you hold on to the or the term lasts as long as it takes you to deliver the product or service. And then when you're paid by your customer, you pay back that particular offering. Now, I'll add one more thing to the end of this, and that is that it's very common to include invoice factoring, which we'll go through on the very next slide. Uh, so if you can imagine this, you use the purchase order as collateral. And as that purchase order, as you start to produce the product or service, and then it ships, when it turns into an invoice, then it's transferred into a factoring program. So the alternative finance company will use the purchase order itself for collateral, 
or the contact the contract, and then once it's converted into an order that ships, uh, the alternative finance company will actually use that invoice then as collateral in a factoring program. So it follows the order all the way through. And you can see how this can grow with your business because you choose which orders or which contracts you'd like to put through this finance offering. So as your business grows, your financing can grow with it. And the term only lasts as long as it takes for you to get paid by your customer. So very scalable. I also wanted to talk about receivables factoring. And I mentioned that this is off balance sheet financing. And what I mean by that essentially is that when you get into an invoice factoring program, the alternative finance company will purchase your receivables. And when those receivables are purchased, you actually won't list that as a liability on your balance sheet like you might do with a typical loan, uh, like a short-term loan, you would list as a liability on your balance sheet. In a factoring relationship, you don't do that. You'll see your receivables go down because you sell off that receivable and your, your cash position increases. That's the actual effect on the balance sheet. Now, in this type of program, what happens is, uh, and I'll use, let's say, a $100 uh, invoice as an example, you will be advanced funds based on the value of that invoice. It's usually at a rate of about 70 to 90 percent. So at a 70 percent rate, a $100 invoice, you'd be advanced about $70. The rest of the money, uh, which would be $30 in this case, is held in what's called a reserve. Well, the factor waits uh, for your customer to pay that invoice. So essentially, you're forwarded the funds to use as working capital. And then when the check is received, when payment is received by your customer, uh, then the rest of the funds are returned to you, that reserve, which will vary between 10 and 30 percent again. and then a factoring fee is pulled out of there. And it's typically between 1% and 3% of the value of that invoice. So again, you can see where this could be a very scalable financing offering for working capital because you can choose the invoices that you factor. Uh, and when you're short on working capital, you can actually pull out value that's in those invoices. It's fairly common for some businesses where you tend to pay your vendors a little faster than what you're paid by your customer. And that can really uh, create trouble with your cash flow. And this is one way to pull the value out of those invoices. So if your invoices are going beyond 30 days or 60 days, those receivables, you can pull the, the value out of those receivables uh, and really help with your working capital situation. So that's off, off balance sheet financing. I wanted to make sure that we talked a little bit about collateral and specifically about the valuation of collateral. It's important for all businesses to understand how assets will be viewed from the outside. So if you're, if you're speaking with a lender, uh, they will look at the assets in your business. And you may wonder, well, where, where are they coming up with those values? I've put some values in on this slide here. And what I'll tell you is that I, I put ranges in most cases here. You'll find that by from vendor to vendor, uh, that these numbers may vary. You'll have to have a, a direct conversation with whoever you're working with on the lending side. But these are some basic values you can use as guidance. Uh, we talked about uh, receivables, and we talked about the range being 70 to 90 percent. That's fairly common. Uh, the nice thing about receivables, and what all lenders will look at, they'll look at your assets, and what they're trying to understand is how quickly those assets could be turned to cash if they needed to be. And when you look at invoices and receivables, that's pretty close to cash. So typically, the valuations on those are going to be a little bit higher. That's why sometimes they can approach 90%. If we look at purchase orders and contracts, which we talked about already, 50% is a more reasonable number. What we find with contracts specifically is that that number could be a little bit lower. Uh, and mostly that's because a contract is a promise to deliver a something in the future, whether it's a good or service, and that's a little bit, sometimes can be a little bit more difficult to turn into cash, um, but 50% is a fairly good number if we're going to put a value on purchase order and contracts. When we're looking at fixed assets, a fairly good number to use is 75% for commercial real estate, and again, that number can vary um, depending on who you're talking with. And then machines and equipment, a fair number to use is about 50%. 
one of the things you're going to have to watch with machines and equipment is that the base number that you use for the valuation on a machine or a piece of equipment might be the depreciated value. That's a fairly common way to look at it. So if you have a $100,000 machine and it's depreciated, uh, if you're depreciating that particular asset and it's, it's depreciated down to 60000 you may have about 50% of that or $30,000 worth of collateral, so to speak. So again, these are some guidelines, but it's important when you go into the lending process that you understand really how your assets are going to be valued as you go into and eventually get into that negotiating phase when you're looking for lending. So again, some guidelines worth mentioning about collateral valuation. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about the lending process specifically in alternative finance because we'll experience something that's a little bit different than the lending process in, in a banking relationship. It's fairly straightforward and if there was underlying themes in this process, what they would be is simplicity and speed mostly. Um, I've broken it down into three steps essentially. It's assessment, evaluation, and solution. And the assess assessment phase, fairly common for all lending uh, that you go through some type of assessment and that's when you'll be asked for your financial information. And it usually goes a little one step further in alternative finance where the alternative finance company will really learn a lot about your business, how it is that you make money. They'll want to learn about uh, your profitability. They'll want to know uh, simple things like how you differentiate your business and who are your customers. And they'll ask about uh, who your vendors are and who your customers are. And there's usually a, a deeper learning process that goes on in alternative finance even though it happens a little bit faster. And then they'll finally understand the timing uh, and how much capital you're really looking for in your specific situation. Now after all that information is pulled together, typically the evaluation happens fairly quickly in alternative finance. It can happen within a few days of all of the assessment information put, uh, being put together. So it happens fairly quickly. And out of that evaluation process, typically you'll be offered a few options for solutions in the form of a proposal. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this whole process, if you're, if you're aggressive and you want to move quickly, you can get through this whole process in about five days or less. So that is very different than the banking industry where this could take weeks and I've heard sometimes it even takes months. Uh, so speed and simplicity, again, underlying themes in this process, but very different than the banking industry. So again, uh, I wanted to create some awareness today and hopefully I've, I've done at least that. We didn't go real deep into this, but you'll have some opportunities to either ask questions and I'll provide you my contact information if you want to talk with about any of these ideas any further or you have specific questions. But because of the landscape today, uh, we see a very different scenario playing out for businesses and the availability of financing, especially in the areas of working capital in that growth phase. There's a gap that is formed out there and that's the gap that alternative finance seeks to fill. Uh, I went through some of the solutions, of course, uh, that are available out there, some that are very common to the banking industry and then some that are a little bit more flexible and a little bit more creative than what you'll find in the, in the banking industry. One of those, of course, was the contract financing that I talked about. And then we talked about off-balance sheet uh, financing, which can be both flexible uh, and it has that, that ongoing benefit of not being listed as a liability on your balance sheet. So uh, I am mostly through what I want to talk about today, except to tell you about SLK Finance. And SLK Finance was really formed, uh, if you look at that stage diagram, SLK Finance was, was formed to, to provide services and lending to that, that stage two. And coming out of the financial crisis, there was the, the gap, of course, that we talked about that formed where financing was needed for simple things like working capital and for growth in businesses. And what we try to provide, like other alternative finance companies, is a very straightforward, simple approach to providing uh, solutions uh, to business capital needs. And it's really that simple and that straightforward. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you today. 
and I've included my contact information. If anybody wants to talk or ask questions, uh, if this, if you think this could be a benefit for your business, uh, I'd love to have a, a further conversation with you. Patrick, uh, excuse me, Patrick, thank you so much um, for the information that you share with us today. Two questions have uh, come through. One is on collateral, and then, um, and it's basically this: um, for companies that um, don't have a lot of hard assets like equipment and and real estate, um, alternative finance, in my opinion, is a is a good option for them. What do you typically see? What types of companies do you typically see that maybe don't have the equipment and the real estate collateral, um, but are very financeable with alternative finance? Well, you know, it's, it's very common in alternative finance, especially when you're looking at businesses in that stage too, that, that something's going to be lacking. You know, you're either going to be short on cash or you might be short on assets. And what we'll look for typically, if you're, if you're short on assets, uh, which isn't a terrible way to start a business, if you're careful about uh, fixed assets and, and the way you want to spend your money, uh, it's not uncommon that, that, that you'll, you'll be without those fixed assets. What we'll look for, though, specifically is, is cash flow then. Uh, you know, if you're generating cash, uh, it's nice to have the assets, and all lending institutions look for assets, but we'll focus a little bit more on, on cash flow. We might focus on, on receivables, uh, but it's not uncommon for businesses when they're, when they're going in through that phase two where they don't have a lot of assets. Thank you, Patrick. I'm going to encourage um, the other uh, person who asked the question to contact you directly via email or phone um, about that. So, again, Patrick, thank you so much for sharing the information with you, and I'm going to wrap up um, with a couple of upcoming webinars that we have. Thank you so much. All right, coming up here. In March, our next webinar next month, March 17th and 19th, Happy St. Patrick's Day, uh, features Susan Dutton of Smart Relationships. She will present How to Foster a Culture of Innovation and Creativity. And in April, Kevin Donnelly of Aurora Healthcare will present How to Develop and Profit from a Culture of Wellness. Then in May, we'll learn how to establish yourself as an expert, and in June, how to hire leaders who have it all. You can register for our on-site workshops, our online certificate programs, and all upcoming no-cost webinars at uwgb.edu slash sbdc. We also have several past webinar recordings there on sales, marketing, business ownership, and leadership. In closing, I would very much like to thank Patrick Katowski of SLK Finance. Thank you, Patrick. Mickey Noon and Tim Bino at First Business Bank, and Michael Wentworth of TMR Associates. And thank you all for attending. Now you know the secrets to business financing success. This concludes our webinar. Goodbye.